hello everyone we are discussing the uh, basic regulatory uh, instruments and in the last class we talked about a special case of uh, regulatory instruments uh, that is the pigovian fee so uh, today we'll be giving a broad uh, outline of what is the basic regulatory instrument so far the environmental regulation is concerned and uh, then we will be talking about the market based instruments only. So, uh, the broad contents of these uh, basic regulatory instruments here we will be discussing what is the market based instruments then we will be talking about what are the different forms of market based instruments. So, overall in, uh, in the under this uh, regulatory instruments we will be talking about different mechanisms like your pollution tax, then we will be talking about the subsidies, marketable permits, liabilities and refundable uh, deposits. And then we will be uh, judging that what is these, uh, the efficiency of this market based instruments in controlling the pollution itself. So, this is the broad outline that we will be uh, trying to cover under this market based instruments. Today, we will be talking about uh, the case of uh, this pollution tax. Okay. So, first of all we will understand uh, the basic regulatory instruments. So, as you understand that uh, we are having the two uh, broad categories of uh, regula uh, regulatory instruments in order to control the pollutions. And these two forms are the prescriptive uh, regulations. Uh, which is also known as the command and control regulation method or command and control approach. And the second one is the market based instruments. So, in the, the first one this is the prescriptive regulations or which is also known as the command and control approach it has already been taught by uh, Professor S. P. Singh. So, this part is over. So, today we will be uh, focusing on the market based instruments and we will be talking about a special case the one of the uh, instruments that is the pollution tax. So, let us understand what is the market based instruments because uh, in the command and control approach uh, this is uh, this is a, as a regulatory instrument what the government or regulatory body is doing it is prescribing some standards setting some standards. So, that the polluter they will be abiding by those standards and uh, in that way this is a kind of direct uh, mechanisms to control the pollution. But in case of uh, market based instrument this approach is not followed. Here the regulator is giving adopting some kind of indirect instruments right. So, that these in instruments will be providing the uh, polluter a kind of incentive uh, and, and, and uh, to control the pollution itself. And uh, so, uh, if you compare these, uh, these two mechanisms, one is your command and control method and second one is the market based instrument, then you will be finding that in case of command and control, we do not have any flexibility or the polluter they will not have any incentive that they do not have uh, any flexibility to change the, uh, the pollution levels. They need to abide by what is prescribed or what is commanded uh, by the uh, regulator itself. But in case of market based instruments this is giving a uh, opportunities or economic incentives to change to uh, for the uh, for the polluter to change the uh, pollution itself. So, now the thing is that we need to understand how this market based instruments are providing flexibility and incentives to the polluting farms to change uh, the uh, the mode of productions and the level of pollutions. So, uh, these when we are uh, talking about market based instruments they are providing the alternative technologies or the production practices right. So, the polluting agencies they can actually uh, explore about the alternative states of technologies or production practices or management practices. So, that they can reduce the level of uh, this emission or, or, or the pollution and thereby they can change the behavior of the polluters to are adapting more efficient ways of resources. So, uh, now we will be talking that this we are continuing with this, this market based instruments and now we will be finding what are the economic incentives. So, as you understand that the uh, market based instruments 
they are offering some kind of incentives to the polluting agencies of farms into choosing the uh, case of the cost effective pollution control technologies. So, they are free to choose that which technologies pollution control technology is most cost effective, so that they can control the pollutions. They are also free to choose the mechanisms and strategies and they are also uh, free to choose and invest in the uh, right kind of technologies on R and D and so that the pollution can be controlled. But these flexibilities are not found in case of command and control mechanisms of controlling the pollution itself. In this market uh, based instruments, now we will be taking a case the first instrument that is the pollution fees or which is known as the pollution tax. So, in pollution fees or pollution tax, here the polluting agencies of firm, they are charged per unit of pollutions. So, they are taxed for each unit of pollution they are producing and uh, obviously, they are allowed to pollute. So, the for the first hand in the in one hand they are allowed to uh, emit and pollute and in the second hand the uh, the um, farms they are charged for each unit of um, pollutions they are producing. And moreover here um, when you are talking about this uh, generating additional level of pollution it, um, it will it will be implying that more pollution means more cost to a farm. Right. So, more cost to a farm how? Because uh, when the polluter is polluting more the obviously, the polluter needs to pay in more in terms of the pollution fee. So, because uh, um, the polluter now uh, is, uh, is to pay the pollution fee more that is why it is an indirect incentive that the polluter would be would be uh, trying to reduce the emission fee because in order to avoid the or in order to lessen the pollution tax. And that is why in order to do this exercise in order to reduce this pollution, the polluter will be now uh, exploring different kind of informations and processes how to control the cost by using and exploring different alternative technologies. So, now let us have a look on the pollution fees or taxes. right? So, uh, we started with the Pigovian fees and as you understand this Pigovian fee is a kind of pollution fees. We will be discussing how the Pigovian uh, fee or Pigovian tax is a special kind of pollution tax. So, now let us talk about the pollution tax or pollution fee is, uh, itself. So, what is pollution fee or pollution tax? Pollution fees are the payment that are paid by the polluting agencies for per unit of pollution they are emitting, right. And uh, they are paying this uh, this tax amount to a regulatory body or the government or regulatory agencies. And if you are saying you are trying to find the theoretical underpinnings of this pollution fees that when uh, a polluter is polluting he has to pay the tax for pollution. So, uh, the theoretically this concept of pricing the pollution it was uh, by the uh, by the author. Uh, Arthur C. Pigu. So, he developed this uh, idea in, in 1920 itself. So, this is the first edition, first edition uh, where he talked about the pollution fee can be imposed to the polluting agencies and later on we had different versions and editions of this, uh, of this idea. However, if you are talking about the practical application or implementation of this pollution fees, it was developed by uh, this author Alan Nees in 1962, he is an environmental economics and he talked about that we can apply this pollution fees concept in order to reduce um, the pollution itself. And uh, the very genesis of this, this concept pollution fee is that the first they do not uh, then take into account this pollution because they uh, do not account, do not take into account this social cost or social damage they are creating along uh, with their own productions. So, because they are not taking into account this social cost or so social damage in their production profit function, then this is a problem. So, uh, in this context of pollution fees, we are uh, will be discussing two mechanisms of pollution fees 
and here uh, the regulator can exercise uh, the or implement this pollution fees by two ways. The first one is per unit emission charge or per unit pollution generated per, uh, this and that must be charged that must be taxed. And the second one is subsidizing each unit of uh, emissions that the firm is reducing. So, this is the first way that we need to charge impose per unit emission tax and the second one is we need to subsidize each unit of emissions that the firm is cutting back. So, now let us discuss the first major that is per unit emission charge. So, we can take an example. So, let us suppose we are taking the case of power generating firm. Right. So, power generating firm the output of the power generating firm is electricity and along with the electricity production it will be generating the pollution itself. Right. So, now let us take this pollution level generated uh, to be x. So, if the pollution fee or emission fee is charged and per unit charge is p rupees right. So, and the pollution uh, the, the firm is uh, generating pollution amount x, x unit of pollution. So, the tax bill that is to be paid by this uh, power generating firm to the regulator is the p x price multiplied by quantity this is the simple one. But now the question is how much the polluter would emit although we have uh, some idea from the epigovian tax, but we will explore by explaining the concepts of marginal saving and marginal cost concepts. So, here uh, for, for explaining this, uh, this question now we will be talking about the components of pollution costs. So, what are the components of the pollution costs? So, the first component of pollution costs is that the, uh, the firm who is polluting, um, polluting or generating pollution uh, he will be it will be uh, spending uh, money or spending expenditure in order to cut back the pollution. So, that means it is a kind of treatment. So, that one is known as the cost of pollution abatement how to treat the pollution or how to cut back the pollution level. So, that this, this is known as the pollution abatement cost. And the second one is that if the firm is not spending spending anything in order to reduce the uh, pollution level, then obviously the firm is uh, going to pay or uh, the tax is imposed for each level of pollution produced. So, that cost is known as the pollution fees or pollution fees cost. So, which is uh, imposed by the regulator itself or per unit of pollution the, that, that are emitted by the firm itself. So, now we can find out these are the two components and now we can find out what is the total cost of pollution. So, the total cost of the pollution that is uh, uh, that is by a firm is pollution abatement cost this is the first component and the second one is the cost of pollution fee right. So, now we can symbolically, symbolically say that this total cost of pollution which is represented by the T C x is the first component that is the pollution abatement cost plus pollution uh, tax bill or pollution fee that is p into x. So, what you need to do that if uh, this is the total cost then obviously, total cost is to be minimized right. So, in order to minimize the total cost what do we need to do we need to take into account the marginal conditions right. So, what is the marginal conditions that first order derivative of the total cost function must be equivalent to 0. So, we are taking into account this this first order derivative of this total cost and we are equating to 0 then we are finding that uh, these are the two com components c x plus p into x. So, we are finding this this is the uh, this is the result. So, here uh, derivation of uh, the total cost is with respect to your uh, treatment of the pollution or the poly with respect to uh, pollution itself is known as the marginal abatement cost or marginal cost uh, that is incurred by the firm itself and this is p right. So, uh, by, by solving it you can find this p is, is the uh, minus of marginal abatement cost or this marginal abatement cost is also taken as the marginal cost. So, we are finding this p is a minus marginal cost or minus of negative of marginal abatement cost right. 
So, uh, now uh, we will be finding that uh, some other concept that uh, they are necessary in order to understand the concept of pollution uh, fee. So, first thing that we need to take, in, take into account is the marginal abatement cost. So, what is a marginal abatement cost? So, although we talked about here how to how to find out this marginal abatement cost that is the total cost here to, that we are taking into account with respect to the um, for one unit of pollution uh, we are taking into account. So, here we are uh, defining this that uh, it can be un understood when pollution is increasing right. So, that means the cost spent by the farm is decreasing, then only pollution can increase. Right. So, when pollution increases obviously, we need to see that the farm is not spending enough for treating the pollution. So, the cost of uh, cost incurred by the farm in treating the pollution is decreasing. So, that is how we are saying the pollution, pollution is increasing. So, um, therefore, we can say that when pollution is uh, increased and if there is no intervention from the regulatory authority, so cost to the farm will be decreasing. So, because of this, this logic we are saying when the pollution is increased right, the marginal cost or marginal abatement cost is negative ok, because uh, the see the when pollution is increasing the cost incurred by the farm for treating this pollution is decreasing. So, there exists a negative relationship. So, that is why we are saying when pollution is, is increasing the marginal cost of marginal abatement cost it must be negative. So, that is why we are saying that minus of marginal cost or minus of marginal abatement cost. The second concept is the marginal savings. What is marginal savings? Now, we can take this. When again from the same example we are saying when pollution is increasing and uh, so that means uh, the farm farm is not incurring enough expenditure in order to reduce the pollution level right when the in the expenditure is not met or expenditure is not made then obviously the farm will be saving this expenditure right because there is no regulatory mechanisms so pollution will be increasing so when pollution is increasing the farm is not incurring expenditure in order to reduce the farm so that means this level of expenditure is saved right or which are not spent uh, for reducing the pollution level. So, this saving from uh, because you are continuing to generate the pollutions and you are not uh, doing any kind of expenditure for treating. So, this saving from generating the pollutions in the absence of uh, any uh, pollution abatement right it is known as the marginal savings right. So, marginal savings can be defined as savings from emitting one more unit of pollution right. So, now uh, after understanding this marginal saving functions and marginal abatement cost or mar marginal cost function, now we can uh, find out some of the features of marginal saving functions and, and marginal cost function. So, what are the features very basic features of these marginal fun saving functions? So, we can say that when these pollution fee or pollution tax is 0 that means price for the pollution is 0 right. So, it means the government is or the regulatory um, authority is not intervening right. So, uh, so, as a result when pollution fee is 0 the government or the regulating authority is not intervening to control the pollution as a result the pollution level would be the highest one right and because of this 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 is reflected in the marginal saving function so the very feature of this marginal saving functions it teaches us that this marginal saving function is having a negative slope right so we can say we measure this when you are measuring this level of emissions in the horizontal axis x axis and the price per uh, the level of emissions in the vertical axis right then we are having this negative relationship we will be explaining that what will be the shape and slope of these functions. So, now let us talk about the marginal uh, the features of the uh, marginal cost functions. So, 
as you understand that uh, this marginal uh, saving function sorry marginal cost function when uh, it is increasing right when the abatement cost right is increasing. So, what is the marginal uh, fun uh, cost function? So, marginal cost function means when the firm is spending uh, expenditures for uh, controlling one more unit of pollution right. So, when uh, when this marginal cost function is increasing that means, the, the firm is trying to abate more and that is why it is spending more on, on controlling or abating the, uh, the pollution itself. So, as a result what will happen the pollution level will be decreasing. So, we are saying the marginal cost function is increasing because the abatement, abatement expenditure it is increasing. So, it means the obviously the pollution level will be decreasing right. So, that is why this marginal cost function is going to have a positive slope if you are taking into account this marginal cost function from the 0 uh, origin right. So, and when the amount when this this abatement amount is measured on the horizontal axis and uh, similarly the price or the unit cost of abatement is uh, measured in the vertical axis then the marginal cost function will be have a having a positive slope from the 0 origin. So, what you can say that this marginal saving is equal to the the negative of marginal cost functions. Now, we can uh, graphically display uh, this figure. So, uh, what we are talking is when the pollution is increasing firm does not incur the cost to uh, control the pollution uh, level and uh, this means uh, is that the firm will be saving its expenditure by not spending for reducing the pollution level and uh, this is known as the, the savings from generating the pollutions in the absence of uh, the pollution abatement and um, this savings from emitting one more unit of pollution is known as the marginal saving functions that this is we, we have discussed right. So, what we are saying is that this price is the negative of marginal cost that is the marginal saving function. Of the, with respect to the pollution itself. So, based on this understanding and rationality of marginal costs and marginal cost and marginal saving functions and their fairy features, we can say that the marginal saving function will be having a negative slope and the marginal cost or marginal abatement cost functions will be having a positive slope when it will be starting from the 0 uh, origin right. So, here we are measuring the abatement cost in the horizontal axis and the price in the vertical axis. So, likewise for the marginal saving function it is having a negative slope when we are measuring the quantity of pollution. See the unit of measurement is here different here we are measuring the, uh, the quantity of pollution whereas, here we are measuring the abatement right the how we are uh, abating the, the or reducing the pollution itself. So, now after understanding this concept now the next question that we need to uh, see uh, or ask is where does the firm operate at what point the firm will be operating. So, uh, now uh, we are saying that when the emission fee or pollution fee is there firm, firm will be trying to abate the pollution to what extent it will be trying to reduce or abate the pollution. So, it can continue to abate the pollution to the point where marginal cost of abatement right it is equal to the marginal saving from emitting, emitting one more uh, unit of uh, uh, pollution and this must be equal to the pollution fee or emission fee. When this condition is satisfied marginal abatement cost is equal to the marginal saving cost saving function cost and uh, which is equivalent to your emission fee. So, when this condition is satisfied we can say the firm can continue to abate uh, till this point and at this point the firm's total cost are the lowest one. So, the total cost of the firm will be the lowest. So, in our derivation what we have uh, discussed is uh, uh, we showed the components if you are uh, if you can remember we showed the components of 
the uh, total cost function this is this portion we showed the components of total cost functions right so this is the cost of the abatement and this is the policy on uh, tax bill right we try to minimize the cost so there we are finding this is the price is equal to minus of marginal cost and here uh, after doing so we just uh, proved that uh, the uh, polluting firm it can continue to reduce pollution or abate pollution till the point marginal abate com abatement cost is equivalent to the marginal cost is equivalent to the price itself ok. So, uh, for this portion you can uh, refer to this book environmental economics by field and uh, field you can also refer to the uh, this portion in environmental economics uh, by uh, this is the basic reading this is by Kohlstadt itself ok. So, in the next lecture we will be continuing from here they are we will be talking about the uh, how this Pigovian fee or Pigovian tax is a special case of uh, the pollution tax it is not a pollution tax it is a special case of pollution tax and secondly we will be uh, discussing the uh, the second portion second mechanisms uh, that is in terms of subsidies subsidies as the pollution uh, pollution fee ok. Thank you very much.